Test, test. supplies I'm going to be taking along to the other uh, station which should hope we're making a wee bit of money um, before I go and try and buy myself a new machine a new ship I'm going to go to the commodities market and I think it was a metal called Tantalum um, that's going to be making me my money and that and you can see I've got cargo space Cargo space of 16 units, and um, so let's just basically fill up the cargo bay and see what we get. Cargo hold at maximum capacity. Okay, so there we are, that's been all loaded up. You can see a good full fuel, um, and yeah, my ship's in good state of repair. So, what I'll do is I'll now 
go to the navigation menu and set a course for Asilus Primus and now I can request launch I'll show you what the inside the stations other and other places look like um, when I get to the next one. Because the problem is if I if I was to hover about in here to show up um, the station's defences would start attacking me for loitering, which is uh, an elite uh, a capital offence. I'm now just trying to align myself uh, to the star. Asilus Primus, and when I've aligned, I can then start preparing to go into hyperdrive to another uh, another star system. There we go. So that's me aligned, and if you look down at the the bottom right area there, you'll see a mass lock, which means I'm too close to a large body of mass um, to engage my engage my. Oh, there we go. It's gone. I can now engage my hyperdrive, which will charge. I'll be on my way to the new, new system. Whenever you go into the hyperdrive, you always drop out near near the sun of the system you've just arrived at. Um, so you've always got to take initial evasive manoeuvres so that you don't crash in, so that you don't crash into it. Okay, and I'm now looking for the station here, vehicle to landing, which you can see is 1,709 light seconds away, and I've got to just align to it, um, and you can see just above my or at this sort of through the screen there there's a lot of sort of radar thing. Uh, on the right hand side of that is my speed and just above the speed is basically a little kind of compass that tells you where you need to be pointing in order to get to your target. Uh, so we're just point, pointing in roughly the right direction and starting to, to make the journey uh, from the Asilus Primus Sun to be able to landing. This we try to maybe take a little while, so I can maybe, whilst that's going on, I'll explain a little bit of the interface around. If you look at the bottom left area, you can see I've got the vehicle to land in the bit and the distance, and then there's a, an alignment distance and speed um, indicators, and they tell you when it's safe to disengage your sort of super cruise mode, um, which lets you basically travel really quickly within, you know, from point to point within a, within a single solar system. Um, and yeah, so that's there, and then just to the uh, just below that, you can see um, I'm in deep space at the moment, uh, and it falls under the Asilus jurisdiction. That's um, the group that are in, involved in the policing of the area. To the right of that, we've got a little um, a little kind of hologram of whatever it is I've currently got targeted. Um, but since I've not got anything targeted at the moment, I think that probably the sun or a planet, I'm not quite sure. Um, if we move a little bit further to, right, uh, to the right, we can see there's a 51% there. That's telling you the, the heat of, you know, how, you know how much heat is stored up within my ship. Um, and if that gets too high, if that gets above 100%, the different modules and components of your ship start taking damage. Um, so when you're in super cruise mode and and oh, I'm just going to have to quickly avoid, uh, avoid the planet here because I think the station I'm looking for is. Oh, no, it's not. I thought it was behind the planet. Um, where is it? Oh, no, it's not behind the planet, it's just at the edge of this little orbit here. 
so yeah, the, oh, and there we go, you can see here that I've just been pulled out of um, cruise mode by some, uh, some kind of interference from another ship. But since this is a, a cargo ship that I've not fitted any weapons onto, I'm going to just basically run away as fast as I can. Um, I need to wait until my cruise uh, or my frame shift is cancelled, uh, or the cooldown rather is complete. Come on. Yeah, we've got that set charging again. Let's see, and there was nobody um, trying to contact me there, so I don't know quite what's happened. There we are. We're on our way back to uh, to the vehicle to land it. Now, I've had the occasional uh, NPC uh, security forces trying to scan the ship when I've been pulled out of um, super, uh, cru uh, super cruise mode before. Um, I've also had a few NPC pirates trying to attack me. Um, although I've been told that at the moment players aren't able to, you know, bring other players out of war. So at the moment, generally speaking, the you know the interdiction um, thing is just a, a nuisance and not really a risk because. I've once had somebody trying to shoot at me, but because um, I was able to run away fast enough and get uh, get back into super cruise mode, it wasn't a problem. Okay, now you can see here I've um, just arrived at the vehicle 2 landing uh, area here, and I've targeted them out, and you can see the little hologram at the bottom, which was possibly the sun or a planet or whatever it was, is now changed to be a sort of wireframe model of the of the station. Now, I'm currently heading straight towards the Mill Landing Port, um, and because I've been playing for a couple of days now, I know, you know, I'm getting. I think I'm getting fairly good at spotting where the landing ports are on these big, um, you know, stations that look like this. Um, so they always spin um, on one axis, and at one of the, you know, at one end of that axis, you've got the ship. Uh, or the station entrance area. At the other end is just um, the back. And what you're always looking for when you're trying to find, when you arrive at a station like this, you're always looking for what axis is it spinning on, and then you're looking for little lights that you know that are coming off um, around the docking area, so that you can figure out which end of the sh uh, station you want to point your ship at. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to have to quickly uh, request docking permission. So there we go. And there we are, we can see that they've um, so kindly granted my docking request. Oops. And I'm going to need to slow my speed down so that I don't crash. Because I've already lost one of these ships with a, a car, you know, full cargo of expensive stuff. Uh, just the minute I, I was docking to, to replace the ship with the next one up. Um, but there we go, let's get ourselves in. Now, anyone who's played the original Elite will possibly remember this idea of having to try and keep your ship aligned with the um, the constantly rotating station, um, which certainly when you're in a smaller ship like I'm in, it's not really a big problem because you can easily go into the the hanging area, hangar area at any um, at any angle. But when you're certainly in the bigger ships, it, it'll become a lot more important that you um, that you you know point yourself in properly. Now, I've been assigned landing pad 34, so that's me just kind of bringing myself down. And then I crashed, that's wonderful. I've also automatically brought out my landing gear so that I don't uh, I don't you know, scrape the underside of my hull on the on the station. And I'm just gradually trying to bring myself in and oh, kind of keep myself aligned so that I can get all the lights going blue. There we are. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. Okay, so now that I've arrived, um, my sort of landing procedure always is. Um, drop the landing gear as soon as you get into the space station, find your port, land in it, then refuel and sell off whatever cargo it is you're carrying. So I'm going down to the commodities market and I'll be looking for that tantalum metal that I brought along with me. Heard somebody exploding off in the distance there. There we are, that's me selling off the tantalum. And you 
you have just seen there at the bottom of clicked it so fast I didn't even think that it told you how much profit you made, it told you what you bought it for, what you were selling it for and then did this basic calculation on you know, what your profit was. Now at this point, uh, you can see here I've got 145,000 credits. Um, I'm wanting to go now and buy myself a new ship. Um, I'll just check if they've got one of them in here. No they don't. Right, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a, I think it's a Cobra Mark III, which is the a sort of middle of the line, or well, I guess it's the third ship which goes down the, the trading route. You get your starter ship, then you, you move into the, the hauler type ship that I've got here, and then after that I move on into uh, um, you know into the, the Cobra Mark III. Uh, now the Sidewinder is a starter ship, um, and it's fairly decent I guess, you know, it's got a couple of guns, it's got, you know, um, a small cargo bay for moving things around. Um, but then the interesting thing with the hauler that I'm currently in is that although it suddenly has 16 cargo bay, um, you lose you lose one of your guns. So you're you know you're in a very you know uh, you're in a, a spot of trouble if somebody tries to attack you and you can't run away. Um, but as I say, luckily from what I've seen so far, I've been able to run away from anything that's threatened me here. Okay, so I think I'm going to go to uh, another system which I happen to know um, sells the ship I'm looking for. And I'll bring up my galaxy map to show it off, I can show where I'm going. And we just need to wait for it to load, there we are. Ok, and here's the galaxy map. Um, now, you can see here that I'm in the state of the, you know, the system um, Atlas Primus. Um, and I want to get to the system, I think it's Ibutis down here. So what I need to do is you can see here I've got lines going all over the place. Basically what these lines mean, a, a blue line means that you can fly, um, if I bring up the navigation thing, you can see here a blue line means that you can fly um, with, a full, with a full cargo hold. But as you're carrying different amounts of cargo, it means that you can make, you know, it's more difficult for your ship to make jumps. So what you can do is you can decide, right, I want to make a jump to another system um, and you've got to figure out how much cargo can I carry whilst I'm trying to make that jump. So if you look, if you see here, um, you know, the Asilus Primus to Erinin route, that's currently, you know, blue line. So I can make that even with a full, you know, full cargo hold. But if we then look at, say, Dahan to Erinin, um, you can see if I start sliding the cargo mass up, um, other lines are disappearing, but when I get to a certain point, that line will disappear, and that will tell me, you know, that basically means the ship becomes audible. So if I've got um, 12 tons of cargo, I'm able to make that jump, but if I move up to 13 tons, then I simply can't, because um, my ship's too, you know, too heavy, it would seem. Right, so either way, I'm going, from, I'm going to be travelling from Astlus Primus down to Erinin, and then from Erinin over to, uh, to Ibutis. Um, now that's a, a route, or the Erin into Ibutis run is one that I've, I've done a lot when I was, you know, just starting out and experimenting with the trade and trying to figure things out. Um, but what I'll do is, I think, if I remember correctly, personal weapons are a, a good that sell particularly well when I'm going from Asilus Primus to Erin. So what I'm going to quickly do, just to figure out, you know, just to double check that, is there's a, a great little tool I've found, um, which I'm going to bring up just now. So here's a, a brilliant little um, trading tool. You can tell it, you know, I'm current, you know, you can tell it. I'm currently in the Asilus Primus uh, system, and I want to go to the Erin system. Um, I've got 16 cargo capacity and however many credits you've got. I can't remember exactly how many I had, but I think it's about 140,000. So we'll stick that in, and when I now hit search, it will tell me um, what goods I want to carry and how much money. I'm going to, you know, um, how much is available, how many items I should take, what the total cost will be for buying six, you know, that many of those, and it's basically giving me lots of information. Um, so you can see here, that if I if I look at the personal weapons here, um, that that could make me a profit of nine thousand three hundred and twenty-eight if I take sixteen of them from 
uh, Asilus Primus to Erinin and um, okay, that's quite a lot of money so I think I'm going to go for it it was, um, I think it was about 7,000 odd uh, when I looked at it the other day when I was doing the, the travel in there so that's, that's quite good, it would seem that um, whatever, whatever other arms traders were working in the area have stopped and because the supply has dipped down the um, you know the price that they're asking for has, has increased so as I say I'm going to go into the market I'm going to look for the weapons I'm going to look for the weapons category and then I'm going to buy 16 sets of personal weapons so I just need to switch back there we are right so we're going to exit the galaxy map we're going to starport services market and all the sort of big categories are sorted alphabetically so there we go we can find weapons underneath waste which is underneath technology as you'd expect and there we go so we've got personal weapons I'll buy 16 of them so there we go and the voice there are quite um, helpful it you know points out yep the cargo hold scope so what I'm going to do before I leave is I'm going to set my destination uh, to Erinin and then I'm going to then I'm going to try and launch from the hangar. Now, um, not everybody seems to set their destination before they take off. Whoops! Um, helps you push the right buttons, doesn't it? I'm just going to bring in my landing gear and we'll start heading out. Now, um, as I say, not everybody sets their destination before they take off, but I have to say, you know, I've, I've found that it seems to make life a bit easier for me because I know exactly which way to start pointing the ship as I'm coming out the docking bay. Um, so as, as you saw there, I came out and got a safe distance away from the entrance and then just kind of pointed, uh, you know, pointed in the direction I had to head to. Again, it was pointed out by the little compass thing that's just to, uh, just above my speed. And you'll see I'm um, flying along here. I'm just waiting for the little blue light at the bottom right beside mast lock um, to go out and then I can initiate my, uh, my frame drive and um, do a hyper jump. There we go. Oh, okay, let's try that again. So my last lock is off and my drive now charges. So that's me, I've arrived at the sun, just doing my little spin around so that I don't crash into it. And we're going to look for Azaban City, which is the place I'm docking. And again, if we look at the little compass above my speed, it tells me which, you know, uh, roughly where I need to point. There we are. And again, I always like to kind of align myself with the plane the planets are on. Uh, just because it, it, you know, it gives me this impression of up and down. I find it less disorientating that way. So it was fly along the 100 and odd uh, light seconds and we'll be there shortly. Except I'm suddenly feeling very fast. You can see there my speed was up at 10c, which is 10 times the speed of light. And the sister, or the you know, Azaban city, which I'm trying to get to, it's not really, wasn't really all that far away, so I just reduced my speed um, a little bit, whoops, and also accidentally launched a, a coolant purge. So you can see now that my um, my temperature down at the on the left hand side of my of my map then dropped right down to zero and started counting up um, as the you know, as the heat's generated again. Now, had I been in normal space at the time there, I would have um, seen my. But I think I'll, I'll, once I drop out of space, I'll I'll show what happens if you if your temperature gets too low when you're uh, when you're just in normal space there. Because again, the first time I heard the noise, I was like, oh god, what's going on? 
Ayan. Sura na sa'yo. Okay, so there we go. I've now arrived um, at the area and I can now safely disengage because my speed and my distance were um, both in the blue. And we'll see where we are in relation to the station. Now, sometimes I think the, the, transition, the transitions between your cruise mode and hyperdrive mode seem to take longer or shorter and um, I think that's partly to do with the you know the, there's no loading screens in this game once you've once you've gotten into space or once you've loaded your ship that's you 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 know you don't need to load anything else um, and I think the the transitions between the you know hyperspace you know the wormhole space and the the cruise mode down to normal space are the way of uh, you know, that's where it takes its time to load whatever assets it needs. Okay, so there we go. I've, I've now transitioned back into normal space. I'm pointing roughly um, towards the top, of the, above the top of the station. Because you can see here, that's the bottom of the station. That's um, that's the kind of bottom of the axis it's spinning on. So I'm going to aim over the top because I believe the front will be on the other side. In fact, you can almost, you can just make out the, the engine trail of a, a little kind of blue line just to the right of my. Uh, to the map, my little yellow dot there, um, which is the, the trail of another ship. And I think you can maybe see the little flashes as it moves away from the station. I think that's either combat or the engine kind of flickering on and off for some reason. Perhaps he's damaged, I don't know. Anyway, right, so we're closing in uh, and I'm five kilometres away, but so I could, I could request docking permission now, and you get ten minutes between requesting docking permission and then having to actually be docked before the station starts um, getting a bit aggressive because you're trespassing. But I'll, I'll wait until I'm in front of the station before I, before I do, you know, before I request my docking. Back to hold I'm just going to kill the power to my engines actually. And we'll show you what happens if the, if the cockpit gets too cold. Or if the ship itself gets too cold, sorry. So I'm going to come across to my, my systems panel. I'll disable my drives. Um, and a bunch of my other systems as well. And we will see, oops, uh, we'll see that you can, uh, my temperature is now dropping quite rapidly. And there we are, we can now see 5%. And if I look around my cockpit, you'll see that the ice is starting to form and the sort of cracking noise of glass there but I'm going to quickly um, pull everything back on because that makes me very nervous and I don't know if the canopy is going to completely shatter uh, when uh, when you know the whole thing gets covered in ice so again we'll gradually just watch as the heat gen gets generated again and um, the ice will gradually start melting away again I'm just going to quick I'm going to you know, recommence my docking procedure again as the as that ice melts. It looks almost gone now. Okay, so there we are. We're about to dock again. I'll slow my speed. Uh, bring my communications panel. Go to nearby contacts. Request docking permission. And hopefully, they'll give me it. Yeah, it's oh, okay, docking clearance, time to repeat the request. Okay, press my docking again. Oh, that's unusual. Never had the time out, uh, time out on the phone like six There we go, they got me this time. So I guess perhaps they were so busy, or who, uh, whoever the traffic control person was was on a coffee break or something. But either way, I'm going to bring myself in, um, try to avoid this ship that's undocking, and I'll reduce my speed a bit. Lower my landing gear, and I'm heading to the four. There we go, which is right up at the end of the uh, right up at the end of the station. So. 
as I drop down, you'll see that those red lights are rough, you know, just a, roughly in the middle uh, top section of the screen there. That's a huge big sort of, um, I guess, radio tower or something. And I guess that's doing some sort of traffic control stuff. And then as I approach my landing bay here, you'll see I've also got what appears to be a little kind of air traffic control tower. Um, every, every pad has one of these towers. Um, and again, I think it's you get different size of pads. I mean, this is a, a, a tiny little small pad because I'm yeah, a tiny little small ship. Um, but the bigger pads have bigger towers and bigger facilities. And yeah, I think every now and then, or I think twice or three times now, I've been asked to dock at some of the larger, uh, the larger pads, which is quite interesting. Because when you feel huge, it, you know, with this big tower in front of you, you feel quite a big ship. And then when you then look at the t you know, the massive big landing areas, you realise just how small you actually are. But anyway, so now that I've landed, I'm going to refuel. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to replace those heat sinks that I've ejected. And we'll go and sell off this stuff I bought. Ah, there we are, the personal weapons. So you'll see there that as I'm increasing the number of that I'm selling, you can see there that I'm being told I'm being told I've got 16 of them. I bought them for 3,905 each, and that I can sell 16 for 71,856 credits, which gives me a profit of 9,376. So when I hit submit, that that cash all gets added into my uh, added into my bank. And I can then go and start looking into my next uh, my next cargo run. So if you give me a moment, I can pull that up. So here we are. We can see I'm in Erinan City, and I'm going to a system called Ibutus. And again, we'll hit search, and it's telling me there that if I take T or 60 units of T from Erin into a uh, in Brutus, I can make a profit of 5,328. So let's go and load up the cargo with all that. So maybe let's see if we're back in. We look for our food. So now we don't want coffee, we want tea. So that's us, pop 16T. Now, I've been chatting to one of my friends who also plays um, you know, Elite with me and we've both come to the conclusion as well. Initially I thought, is it maybe a little bit um, cheeky to be using a programme to tell us exactly which product to be taking from place to place? And in the end, we've kind of come to the conclusion that it's not really that, it's not really that bad because where we're playing it, ourselves, we could basically set up a spreadsheet, taking a list of all this stuff and doing that anyway. So, I keep pressing that. Um, so instead of us you know, building up the spreadsheet, somebody else is basically doing it for us. And really it doesn't tell you automatically how to make the best profit. You've got to actually do a lot of investigation. You, you, it'll only tell you what's happened between two systems when it was most recently updated. So. I've got to, you know, uh, you've got to have gone to those systems, or somebody has to have uploaded the data to that tool to tell it, you know, what the prices are for everything. And as I say, if, if you've not got enough, or if you spend a bit of time, you can actually, instead of just buying all of one thing, you can actually set up more um, lucrative uh, trading ones if you spend a bit more time actually working with it. Whereas if you're being a bit lazy like me, you can, if you know I'm flying from system A to system B, you can automatic, you know, you can just get it to automatically build up the best, um, you know, or a good little piece of profit that's going to up. Is my landing gear? What? Hard points are gear. I must have accidentally deployed my guns. There we go, yep. Um, I accidentally deployed my guns at some point. Even though I've unfitted, I don't know how that works, but either way. Um, so we're charging. And yeah, we're seeing that um, because that only gives you sort of basic information between two systems, we were happy enough saying that 
it's not cheating because if you spend a bit more time actually working on it yourself, you can you can make more money. And here's another example: when you're uh, you know the transitions between what doing the loading system, you notice I had that white screen there with the zero 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 point zero 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 screen for quite a while. That just shows that it's um, trying to load some data um, ahead of my work. Ah, and there we go, it transitioned back out, we've nearly hit the sun again. And we're now going to set destination for Chango Dock, which is somewhere off to my right. And what I'll do is just so that I don't get too bad, uh, too badly sunburned, I'll rotate the cockpit away from the sun. And there we go, we're now on our way to Chango Dock, which is about um, 500 light seconds away. Okay, so yeah, when I drop here at Chango Dock, I'm gonna I'm gonna refuel. I'm gonna sell my stock, and then I'm gonna buy. Um, you know, buy that new Cobra Mark III ship. Um, although the last time I was doing this, you know, when I was coming to the station to try and dock, and oh, okay, I forgot to slow down again. Oops. Okay, so yeah, if when you fly too fast towards your target, you fly straight past it, and you've got to try and turn around and get back to it again. Now, one of the sort of nice uh, small things that happens in Elite that and it's just quite a nice little touch, isn't you saw there as I flew too close to Chango Dock um, and I flew past it. Oh, wonderful. Um, I got, you know, the cockpit shook because I was affected by the gravity of the planet, which I think is just a, a nice a nice touch. Okay, so we're getting up to full speed again. And what I'll do is I'll boost. And let's see, can I start charging? Nope, I'm still going down. Maybe what's we're charging again? Drive charging. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so that's me. We've gotten back into the super cruise, and we're just going to approach Chango Dock again. And I'm just, I'm just checking my uh, com, uh, my comms log there up at the top left and nobody spoke to me in there because um, usually you'll find that some security forces or somebody will oh, again some security forces will contact you saying we are authorised to carry out a scan or something like that I guess somebody really really wants this team I'm getting hit twice in this uh, in such a short distance so let's see if we can find anyone actually let's go to my um, contacts huh? so there's no see when it says contacts here it's not like your friends and Facebook or anything it's like um, other ships that can find oh there we go so you can see there we've got the security service which should oh ok apparently aren't showing up there um, now they want me to submit an authority crime scan now I know for a fact that I've not done anything wrong because you can see there that my crime is clean so I'm just going to walk away back to Ibitus again, off to Chango Dock. And I can now safely disengage. I'm going to look through the cockpit again just to see everything. There we go, and then we've unlocked. And you can 
see those kind of um, really green lights kind of sticking out the front of the station there. That's what I'm going to. Uh, that's what I'm going to aim towards to, um, you know, to get into the station to dock. And as I said, last time I was coming into this station to dock to buy my ship, I had a massive big load, you know, full of expensive cargo, and um, I got a little bit impatient, a little bit cocky, thinking, oh, I'm amazing at landing, and I kind of crashed right into the front of the station and exploded, losing uh, losing the ship and losing all the cargo, which was um, somewhat embarrassing, because as a friend I'm playing with had been not far behind me watching the whole thing and simply burst out laughing. Here we go, we're gradually making progress in. And again, I'm just taking my time. I don't want to rush because, as I say, um, I, rem I still remember what happened uh, last time that, that I tried that. Okay, so you can see I'm now six kilometres away, I'm relatively close to the front. I'll cut my speed a bit and request uh, the docking permission. Request granted. Now, uh, if I have a look at that contacts thing again, we we'll see that there's a late on Type 9 Heavy. Those things are absolutely massive. And they are so, you know, so big that they fill up almost the full height of this sort of entrance area. And oh, there you go, you can see a guy, the guy that's flying it, struggling to get himself back out. Um, so you can see that he fills up almost the whole height of the, the exit bay and nearly half the width of it, which can make it interesting, um, especially at busier stations when you know, you're trying to get in and out. So there we go, let's just bring ourselves into the docking bay. I think at the moment there's not really all that many human pilots kicking about. Um, I think I'm not sure why, but for some reason I'm convinced that when there's a, a little less than and greater than bracket around uh, another player or another, around another um, radar contact, that's a, a human a human pilot. Um, but I'm not convinced, or I'm not 100% certain. But either way, here we go. That's me docked. So let's um, let's refuel. Even though I'm about to sell the ship, I just it's like as if you're renting a car. You always return it with a, a few a full tank a full tank of petrol. So there we go. Buy the fuel and off to the market to sell. The, uh, so let's top up that um, heat sink that accidentally rejected and off to the commodities market. We'll sell off all the tea. And again, you can see there my profit is. Uh, a good few thousand there. Uh, we've got 5,000 people. Oh, and I think somebody just exploded. That's unfortunate. So, I'm going to go to. Oh, no. Okay, well, here we are. Then I've gone into the outfitting area by mistake. But this will give you a chance to see what the. you know, what my ship actually looks like. Maybe. Ah, there we go. So, I think this, this ship here kind of looks. I think like um, a little bit like one of the space shuttles. So then that's where my turret would be mounted if I had one. Um, I don't know, my heat sink must be somewhere within, you know, in the front there. Maybe one of the, uh, I don't know, somewhere. Um, ah, okay, well, you don't get to see around the back of the ship. Again, that's so. That's the the hauler that I'm currently flying. Um, I'll go now to the shipyard, and I'm going to buy myself a Cobra Mark III. And yes, I want to buy that. And we should see, hopefully, um, that I'll sail off the old ship and trade it in for the new one. And I'll have, you know, I'll be in a new a new dock and be with a new a new ship very soon. One of the minor issues I'm, ha I'm finding with the game at the moment is it's the interface here isn't giving me all you know any statistics for the ships that I'm looking at. It's only telling me the price and the name of it. So the fact that I knew about the, the thing here that this was the next sh uh, ship up for trading 
came from me searching around on the on the Elite Wiki so that I could find out about it. But here we go, so here's and um, here's the, the Cobra. Um I'll look around the cockpit in a minute, but let's go to the outfitting area again. And you can see here that um I've got a, a sort of laser um a laser on the front. Okay, and I've got no other weapons equipped yet, so it looks like I'm gonna have to go and actually buy all of those. Um and again I've got some lightweight alloys and things like that. So what I want to do is I think now I've got about 40,000 credits here, I think it would be a bit silly of me to undock without um, at least, you know, moderate protection on the ship here. So, I think, since this is a class 4 hardpoint, and the only class 4 weapon I can see at the moment is this uh, multi-cannon, um, I would have bought that, except for the price of it is pretty much all the money I have, which means I couldn't afford to buy any any new... Uh, any new stock. So I'm going to not bother, oops, I'm going to instead fit two, see if I can afford to fit two class two um, pulse lasers. Uh, in fact, actually, maybe let's go for the I want a pulse laser, a beam laser, or a beam, or a burst laser. Let's go for the burst laser because it, although it's a bit more expensive, it's still. Um, it still looks as you know. It's still going to give me, leaving with enough cash, to to be able to buy uh, buy enough stock to fly around with. So there we go. You can now see there's my laser being fitted, and I'm also going to buy myself a, a heat sink because, again, I I like being able, or I like it when the fact that I can just eject. You know, the heat sink can reduce the amount of heat that my uh, my, my ship is generating, um, and in a bad spot. So again, we'll also see what other, what other utility mounts we can get. You get a point defence turret to try and defend myself against anybody shooting missiles at me. But since I've not had any missiles fired at me as yet, I think I'm just, I, I won't bother with that. And... That would be I think he should do me. Well, let's check what, what my... Things, yeah, I know you're not selling any more advanced armour or even... Or certainly not any armour that I can afford. Oh yeah, look at that, that's 65,000 or 130,000, so yeah, I think that will probably do me for now. So I've got two weapons in the ship here, um, and I'm now, oops, oh, okay, I'm now being told I've got to assign the weapons to fire group. So I can do that by going to my systems panel, uh, going to my fire groups, and what we'll do is we'll set um, the first lasers to group one, and my heat sink to secondary fire, but that's not going I'll just leave that with pressing the V key to eject one. Okay, so we've now got my a series of weapons uh, set there, and you can see that I've got a lot of uh, you know different systems that I can work with. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to prioritise uh, the systems because again, as I start taking damage, my power, uh, my power plant, and my power generation area is going to be less and less effective. So, for example here, I figure my cargo hatch is not really that important if it breaks down in the middle of, in the middle of combat, because if things are going bad enough that I'm taking hull damage, I'm going to be trying to escape. So, we'll also suggest that I put my, I tell you, I'll put my weapons into um, second priority, cargo hatch and hatch into third priority, and let's see if you have anything else yet. Because that way, um, as my, we you know, my weapons will start shutting down, and I can still, um, you know, try and escape, or I've still got enough power um, guaranteed going to my engines that I can escape. And although I'm shutting down life support, um, I still get ten minutes worth of emergency oxygen. So um, I think ten minutes should be enough time to get from anywhere to a, a station I can dock in. And if it's not, I can always start disabling um, different things and rearranging how my power so, uh, how my power's going. But either way, I'm always making sure that my um, my drives and my shield generator are, are in first priority. My frame shift drive also ha really has to be first priority. And so I'll put my power distributor down to. Well, I'll leave it a second. Um, and that way, you can see here that down at the bottom, from my total power usage. Um, 
for number three there, if I start taking too much damage, the cargo hatch will get shut off first to you know to save the ship or to save the more important systems. And then as I start taking more damage, the priority two systems will start getting shut down. Um, so that I'm still you know so I can still make sure that power that doesn't get interrupted on its way to the shields, the drives, or the or my, my hyperdrive. Because again, those are the most critical uh, components in the ship. You know, for escaping combat when things start to go bad. Okay, so I think that's everything I'm really looking at here for now. Again, um, we've got a few other systems here going on that I'm not really going to worry about tinkering too much. Um, I definitely don't want to hit the self-destruct button, that would definitely be a bad thing. Uh, right, and that'll do. So that's me got the ship all mostly set up the way I'm wanting it to be. What I'll do now is I think I'm going to take a break and I will probably come back and play a bit more later on and stream, you know, stream my first couple of trading runs in this, uh, in this new ship and I'll keep that going until I've got it properly equipped and ready to um, you know, ready to do something a bit more interesting than hopping from station to station, um, basically trading cargo. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'll just double check. I need to buy any munitions. No, I don't. Wonderful. Right. Well, uh, if hopefully you'll have enjoyed watching that there um, and seeing a little bit of what Elite Dangerous can be about, I'll try and show some combat um, another time. Because at the moment I'm, I'm quite horrible at it and I just need to you know, basically get used to it. But for now though, thanks for watching and I guess I'll catch you later.